27 is obeys. So we need to know this. So now we are seeing basic things. CDC standardized growth charts are available where I already described about the percentile. So now let us see, we were talking so much about the Indian scenario and global scenario. So globally it has increased, we already seen. There are a lot of studies done in India, Dr. Khadilkar, uh, very eminent pediatric endocrinologist has done a study in private school, government school, and compared with the international obesity task force data. Not much difference. So definitely we say that there is an increased prevalence in the developed countries than developing countries. But please remember, now it is not only in the urban, affluent, or developed countries. It is increasing everywhere, including all socioeconomic strata, rural area. So our Pune study, Delhi study, all show the same thing. 10 to 14% children are overweight, 3 to 6% are obese, but actual figures may be higher. But ultimately what it is, there is a rising trend in the prevalence of obesity, globally as well as in our country. So, and according to WHO, incidence of obesity has tripled in last four decades. So we need to know prevalence in urban India. There are a lot of studies are done. So globesity is a terminology which is escalating global epidemic of overweight, obesity. Recent statistics is there. So that is also showing the same thing. And our 5 to 8% expenses from our budget goes to tackle the obesity and non-communicable diseases. Our country has got one more challenge. We have got a double burden, you know, obesity is on one spectrum, malnutrition and underweight on the other hand. And we tackle that. So now we have seen basic things. Now let us go with the causes. Causes are, are divided and simplified. See, all of us, we know exogenous or we call physiological, it is more than 95% where there is a normal growth, development, puberty. Uh, adolescent is a tall, obese and mildly advanced or normal bone age. But this diagnosis is by exclusion. So we need to know about the pathological causes, endocrine causes, syndromic causes, monogenic causes, drug-induced causes. So we'll discuss in short all these things, drugs, glucocorticoids, anti-epileptics, especially valporate and carbamazepine. Many of us, we can say that weight gain is very fast, antipsychotics. And very important factor, I think environment chapter people will be very happy to know. There are environmental pollutants like a bisphenols, PCBs, HCB. They are also work as endocrine disruptors. And we know that they are reason for the precocious puberty, same way for the obesity also. So I told about the exogenous obesity and pathological obesity. So very important thing we have to know, in the adult, there is only one growth chart. But in child and adolescent, there are growth chart according to the age and gender, which we should learn to follow. So let us see what is exogenous obesity. This is the one now recent advances. And we, pediatricians and adolescent specialists, in our office practice, day in and out. I'm very sure if I ask you, your incidence of obesity, who are where your regular patient will not be less than 20, 25%. So what happens? There is an energy imbalance. Energy intake is more than energy expenditure. And it leads to fat stores. It is caused by long-term positive energy intake. Definitely, it, it, it is affected by the cultural, behavioral factor, biological factors. And individual susceptibilities to the genetic and hormonal factors also. But very important thing, energy expenditure. Always we talk energy expenditure by doing a exercise, physical exercise. Is it that only energy expenditure? No, we have to remember resting metabolic rate, meal induced thermogenesis, and physical activity, energy expenditure, we know. But very important is non-exercise activity, thermogenesis, NEAT, not our NEAT. This is NEAT, which is very complex process. But all we have to understand, if you help someone to reduce the weight, this is a very important thing we have to remember, energy expenditure. So <clears throat> resting metabolic rate may be inherited. 
or may be affected by some of the conditions. Meal induced thermogenesis is different in different types of foods. So we see now, let us go ahead, move ahead with certain things. So junks versus the healthy snacks, social media, TV, video games and playground. I'm very sure when we ask our adolescents in our OPD, how many hours you play? Initially, I used to get full. They used to say two hours, but weight is not decreasing. So that is a video game they play. So specifically ask them, is it a video or playground games? And then celebrities endorsing. And these adolescents are not having media literacy. They get carried on. And then nutrition transition is happening. All of us, we know that traditional food is replaced by the junk food. Very common. So let us see what are the causes of exogenous obesity. All of us, we know. Let us do, let us me. Uh, let us do little fine tuning. So junks consumption, we all of know, we are so many times I heard what is a junks. I'm not going to talk about that. Consumption of junks has increased. Eating out is a common thing. So super size portion, portions are very big. If you go to cafe coffee day, that coffee is so big or the sandwiches are so big. And definitely working parents, both the parents working for convenience. The children are giving a processed food. Fast food we call Media advertisement by the celebrities, which is taken as a real because of lack of media literacy. Some film star uh, cooking the noodles or drinking the cold drinks. All these things are common. TV, computer, internet, social media, video games. Now I think all of you know, chat GPT. Maybe that will be the problem next down the line. Instead of discussing uh, screen time, we will discuss about that. Easy transportation. See, uh, Every house will have one, uh, two wheeler, four wheelers. And even if you go to visitable shop, if at all they don't use the apps, we'll go on the scooter ride in a car. Sedentary lifestyle is increasing. And many times we tell them to play, but there are no safe grounds. There is academic overload. Maybe there are targets fixed for them. Technological advances. See, all of us, we know, we buy, maybe I'm from a bigger city like Bangalore. Don't go out, buy on Dunzo. By, uh, by Amazon or Nika, Mintra, there are innumerable are there. And these technological advances are reducing our activities. Chronic stress or low self-esteem increases the binge eating. Inadequate sleep. Here, yeah, let me touch right. about why inadequate sleep is problem. When there is an inadequate sleep, there is an alternation, alteration of the glucocorticoid and sympathetic activity, reduces the leptin secretion, which is a satiety hormone, and increases ghrelin secretion. Obviously, there is a obesity. COVID pandemic definitely uh -huh. Uh -huh. a reason. So let me tell in the right uh -huh. light uh -huh. the obesity runs in a family because no one runs in the family. So this is the one thing and children and adolescents are experiencing the double threat of COVID-19, co-obesity. Quarantine, social distancing, eating junk, excessive screen time. It has led to undernutrition, obesity, micronutrient malnutrition, Unmasking of lifestyle related NCDs. COVID has played a major role. There are a lot of studies are there, how it has affected the life. So now let me tell about, in short, about the endocrine obesity. I talked about the ex, uh, exogenous obesity. Now let us see, there are many things are there. Cushing syndrome, hypothalamic obesity, insulin resistance, leptin resistance, pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, hypothyroidism, growth hormone deficiency, PCOS. There is one terminology, rapid onset hypothalamic hypoventilation and autonomic dysfunction, that ROHHAD. This is the thing which I am not talking. There are every endocrinological problem will have a different type of clinical characters, which we need to identify. Here, our Malvika was diagnosed hypothyroidism. Is it obesity causes hypothyroidism? The obesity has raised the TSH, not hypothyroidism. So always remember, when there is a raised TSH during obesity, don't jump and tell that this is a hypothyroidism. Weight reduction may correct the hormonal levels. So all these things we have to know. So there are neuropsychiatric problems like eating disorders. There are obesity syndromes. So when we are undergraduate, we used to have, uh, we were a postgraduate, there was a Competition, prader syndrome, tell me what it is. We should know in short at least what is a prader -Willi. 
because we will not unnecessarily go on investigating many things. How to exclude these things, we should know. Like a prader willi, we know that there is a neonatal hypotonia or there is a hypogonadism or hyperphagia, obesity, short stature, cognitive impairment. So there are many syndromes are there. Usually it is because of genetic mutation. It is used for the obese children and adult with a dysmorphism, hyperphagia, other signs of hypothalamic dysfunction, hypogonadism, and intellectual disability. So they may be inherited as a autosomal or X-linked pattern. So we are not going to go into details of that, but at least we should have known like barded beetle syndrome. We'll have retinitis, pigmenta, pigmentosa, short hands and feet. All these things, at least we should know, have a basic knowledge. Same way there is a monogenic obesity, which is detected in early childhood. It is a very differentiating point. It is because of single gene mutation and it is a recessive. So it goes in consanguineous in families. Many theories are there, leptin deficiency, leptin receptor deficiency. It is a rare. It is early onset, not late onset, with an endocrine disorder, very easy to identify. And then management is very difficult. Maybe that is not our forte. Definitely, we are going to refer to the endocrinologist. So now we have seen the causes. Maybe few of them I have not discussed because we are not going to go into a lot of theory. So history is very important. Any case, history and examination gives us a clue. So maternal gestational diabetes history, preconceptional maternal weight, PIH, IUGR, high birth weight. See, we know that that Barker's hypothesis, the children who are born small, one fifth of them get a metabolic syndrome. So we have to see that it doesn't happen. Age of onset, just now I told, early versus late onset. Early onset is monogenic. At the time of puberty, if it is there, faulty eating habits, growth spurt, or maybe genetic also sometimes. Tempo of progression, genetics and food habits. Means if it is a rapidly progressing, definitely genetic. Associated features of Cushing or hypothyroid. I think I don't need to go into detail. Developmental delay, syndromic obesity. If there is a past history of head injury or some hypothalamic symptoms, all those things we have to keep it in mind. Family history, obesity related genes, hypertension, dyslipidemia mainly epigenetics and parental obesity. Drugs, already I told. Diet, nutritional supplement, it's a craze. Food fats, lifestyle and screen time, sleep pattern, already I told. Now let me tell, if you consume more than what is recommended daily allowance, about 100 calories per day, you will increase 5 kg in a year. Same way screen time also they say. If you have a screen time one hour per day, your obesity may increase by 2%. It is proved by the studies. So sleep pattern, short sleep, uh, reducing the sleep time definitely leads to obesity. So we have to know because we know that adolescent sleep late because of the melatonin secretion is little delayed. And then menstrual history, age of the binarchy, menstrual irregularities. And in adolescent, we always take a heads. The study tells High negative reactivity, mental get up also leads to obesity. So we understood what we are going to cover up in the history. Now let us see what we are going to see in the examination. So we understood the anthropometric measurement, weight, height, BMI. We have to use the appropriate charts, gender <clears throat> and age. But waist circumference, skin fold thickness, waist hip ratio, very important. So now waist circumference, you have to measure the narrowest diameter of the waist, more than 94 centimeter in males and more than 80 centimeter in females, always it is high risk. Skin fold thickness, usually we don't do, maybe for a research study and this thing, they use a triceps skin fold thickness. Very important is waist hip ratio. Males more than 0.95, females more than 0.85. Definitely hirsutism, acne, stri gives in a a lot of information to us. It is a velvety patches on the neck, axilla, sometimes in the groin, dysmorphic features, blood pressure, very important. We have to make it habit. SMR, whether the puberty has set or not. Sometimes precautious puberty is there. And these obese children, they get a puberty early. So we have to keep it in mind. 
psychiatric and neurodevelopment evaluation is very important, thyroid enlargement. So hypothyroidism, always don't diagnose obesity with a TSH raised, means it is hypothyroidism. Sometimes we do little over diagnosis. If there is a lipomestia in a girls, we may take it as a precautious puberty. We have to learn how to examine. In obese males, penis may appear as a micro penis. Genu vulgum may be mistaken for rickets. Always very important. Fundoscopy, we may not be routinely doing. Retinitis pigmentosa or raised intracranial tension, we can do it. Waist circumference charts are available. We should know these growth charts. Then waist to hip ratio norms. What is excellent, good, average, at risk? Already I told, but you should know the range also. And how to measure our uh, waist circumference, I told. It is a narrow diameter of the waist. And for a hip is, uh, it is a widest diameter. So accordingly, we have to learn correctly. So now this is talk more in the adult, but let me touch it. Apple shape, always say obesity, apple shape. It is above the waistline. Abdominal girth is bigger than hip circumference and it is associated with metabolic syndrome and related health problems. And pear shape below the waistline, more commonly associated, this is a subcutaneous part. It is not a visceral. It is associated with less commonly with the metabolic syndrome and related health issues. So some of these clinical characters, we should be well versed. These are the stria, stria, acanthosis, nigricans, genu, vulgum, hirsutism. All these things we should be well versed. Already I told, delay in growth, puberty or development, hypogonadism, short stature, dysmorphism, hyperphysia, early onset, visual symptoms, neurological features, learning disorders, our antenna should be up. We should know what are the pointers, the cause of obesity, endocrinological causes, syndromic obesity. So let us move on to the investigations. Our Malvika was thoroughly investigated. Do we need to do the, all the investigation all the time? Not. Routinely, let us do the blood count, oral glucose tolerance test, depending on the severity of the obesity, lipid profile, SGOT, SGPT, free T4, TSH, fasting insulin, LFT, kidney function test, and let me add, if there is a hirsutism, acne, or acanthosis nigricans to rule out PCOD, or other any other uh, pathology, abdominal ultrasonography. And let us reserve the investigation according to the clinical examination. We don't need to do all the investigation for all the patient. So specific investigation, depending on our examination and history. So fasting insulin, all of you know that fasting insulin is very important because it tells about the insulin resistance. More than five units of uh, insulin fasting, always our, we should know that they are going towards the insulin resistance. Vitamin D, calcium, phosphate, parathormone, LH, FSH, testosterone to diagnose PCOD, bo bone age, x-ray hand. PCOS workup, genetic studies, sleep studies. Genetics testing should be limited to children with early onset obesity with family history of extreme obesity or hyperphagia. So tall, let us now, this is the slide which is very important. Tall and obese, exogenous. Short and obese, pathological. So exogenous obesity. Obesity start by the age of five to six years or later, exogenous. Proportional increase in weight and height. You can know by the growth chart. Fat distribution over the body proportion. Proportionate dysmorphic features are not there. Neurodevelopmental delay is not there. Bone age may be normal or mild advancement. Pathological obesity. See, definitely it starts early. There is a genetic inheritance. Short and obese, always remember, fat, fat distribution is disproportionate. Cushing syndrome, buffalo arm. All of us, we remember dysmorphic features, neurodevelopmental delay, bone age is delay. Growth charts help in gaining information regarding the prior growth pattern, time of weight gain, change in height velocity. So all of us, we know this. We have to be very well versed with the growth charts. And exogenous obesity definitely respond to lifestyle majors and pathological will not. So weight and height charts are there. Then pediatrician friendly IAP growth charts are there. I think it reduces our work. We don't need to go through the app or formula. This in the corner, you can see 
by plotting that you can make out they are overweight or obese i think these charts i think we should use in our opd so this is just an example a 15 years old girl with a weight 18 80 kg and height 165 cm calculate the bmi and plot it 29.1 definitely obese so all these things we are discuss now for what because it leads to these consequences or complications and these complications are very important to know first and foremost endocrinological insulin resistance type 2 diabetes pubertal advancement there is a big theory behind that all we will not discuss now menstrual abnormalities pcod cardiovascular hypertension metabolic syndrome which i am going to discuss little more this little later dyslipidemia coronary artery disease and the study shows 30% 34% obese will have a non alcoholic fatty liver disease here you can reverse the process but once it goes to fibrosis non alcoholic steatohepatic liver disease or cirrhosis then it is very difficult to revert back and make a habit of diagnosing it gall bladder disease because gall stones are increasing because they increase cholesterol excretion now the pulmonary complications neurological mental health problems and we know that obesity itself is a chronic inflammatory condition malignancies let us see one by one pulmonary sleep abnormality obstructive sleep apnea hypoventilation asthma because this is a chronic inflammatory condition aggravates asthma neurological sedotomer cerebri more common in females migraine prone to the malignancies like breast <laughs> uterus prostate colorectal and mental health problems are plenty depression anxiety low self esteem poor school performance body image issue eating disorders orthopedic problems slip capital femoral epiphysis osteoarthritis and that blown disease all these thing we should be aware and we have to screen for that now this metabolic syndrome i think there are lot many names are for metabolic syndrome syndrome x deadly quartet raven syndrome what it is central obesity hypertrichosidemia insulin resistance low hdl hdl is a protective if it is a low definitely it is harmful hyperglycemia hypertension these all metabolic abnormalities increase the risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes mellitus all the adult diseases they are they manifest in the adolescent age group so these all these things we all have to know the pediatric cutoffs of these values uh, laboratory values abdominal obesity i told the fasting plasma glucose more than that we'll see it little later but see the blood pressure always see that you record the blood pressure systolic more than 130 diastolic 85 i am very sure all of us are experiencing that and hypertension may be initial stages we can use anti hypertensive drugs but after that lifestyle changes definitely help so this investigation let us know the pathological cutoffs see we will get investigation but should we know we should know fasting blood sugar should not go beyond 126 post prandial not about 200 hb a1c not more than 6.5 total cholesterol not more than 200 ldl and triglyceride not more than 130 hdl less than 40 and hgpt should not be more than 60 so these pathological cutoffs also we should know so apart from that we should know the pointer towards the complications like headache hypertension may be there benign intracranial hypertension so if there is a daytime somnolence and there may be osa we have to be proactive and ask them so abdominal pain may be there gall stone renal stone diabetes mellitus cutaneous acanthosis so all these things we should know and very important we all have to recognize the psychosocial impact already i have enumerated that it leads to mental health disorders suicidal ideations eating disorders substance abuse they are stigmatization discrimination victim of bullying poor peer ac acceptance so let us know little bit about the recent advances uh, i am at the end of my session now recent advances are very important for us to know already i have quoted about neat it is very important for it can play a significant role in helping to maximize the total amount of calories burnt and the composition 
uh, this we have to give attention to need. So just doing one hour exercise and not doing anything whole day is of no use. The composition and metabolic function of the intestinal microbiota is altered during obesity, resulting in greater extraction from the diet. So probiotics also may play a role. Monitoring of appetite and satiety is very important because this white adipose tissue is considered as an endocrinological organ and there is an interlink between adipose tissue, GI tract and CNS. So adipose tissue, white adipose tissue secretes leptin, which is a satiety hormone and gastrointestinal tract secretes ghrelin, which increases the appetite. So we have to be aware of all these things now. Just telling a physical activity doesn't help or low calorie diet doesn't help. All these things should be kept in mind. And we know that this is a chronic inflammatory process. And this leptin, adenopectin, these are the things which reverse the insulin resistance and weight gain. So these recent advances also we should know. This is a flow chart, very simple thing, like a obesity. If there is a growth, puberty, onset. If it is a normal, exogenous and do complication screening. Already I told metabolic uh, syndrome and all those things. If there is a slow growth, endocrine workup. If there is a short stature, all these things. Early onset, developmental delay. Go accordingly, do the karyotype or targeted panel for the obesity. So simplify our work. So management is identify the cause. What is the severity, duration? More the severity, more comorbid conditions and complications. So obviously, here our role starts here. Lifestyle modification, no junk, diet counseling, physical activity one hour, screen time monitoring. Already I told, importance of screen time monitoring, adequate sleep, behavioral modification. Sometimes you need a CBT. So what is our target? See, there are so many companies, apps, some powders, they say that will reduce your 5 kg in one month. That is not our target. Gradual and sustained loss, half kg loss per week, 7 to 10% weight loss over six months. So important is a family therapy and family has to be involved. So we should have a basic knowledge of what is the calorie intake because depending on the activity and age, it changes. It ranges from 1,800 to 3,200. Accordingly, we have to plan. And we used to talk about food pyramid. Let us move on to my plate. <clears throat> so mindful eating, reduce the portions, multicolored food, high energy foods like pizza to be eaten in the morning. Simple thing, because it burns the energy in the morning, not in the evening. So diet is a very important thing to discuss. Three meals a day, no missing breakfast, healthy snacks, our family meal time, eating food without TV, distraction, educate, involve family, avoid rigorous dieting as well as food fats. So it helps a lot. Now prescribe them. We always write exercise. What is that exercise we should tell them? See, children and adults should do one hour of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity each day, including daily aerobic. And activities that strengthen bone and muscles. That is a running, jumping, climbing, push-ups, walking, swimming, cycling, three days a week. So resistant training, weight lifting, definitely not. But resistant training, there's a sports medicine is a big topic. With your own body, you can do yoga. That is a resistant training, which is very important. We have to plan according to their requirement. This is a pyramid, exercise pyramid. Every day what? Three, five, three to five days a week what? Two to three days a week what? What should we cut down? Not only playing, what should we cut down also we should know. It's a very important therapy. Our aim is not a pharmacotherapy. Our basis is non-pharmacotherapy. But we should know a little bit about pharmacotherapy, which decreases the hepatic glucose production, enhances insulin sensitivity, results in moderate weight loss, so commonly, I found out from the endocrinologist who is practicing from 30 years, she told me that she has hardly used it. See, orally stat is the commonly used, which is allowed about 12 years. It prevents breaking down of fat, which is required for fat absorption. So the fat is excreted, not absorbed. But it may cause nausea, flatulence, bloating, diarrhea, lactic acidosis, lifestyle Changes are very important. Metformin approved in type 2 diabetes, which is helpful. There are other drugs also. We'll not go into details of that. Bariatric surgery, not routinely used for children. Gastric bypass, gastric plication, gastric banding. 
it is done only in severe obesity when bmi is more than 40 kg per square meter with complication and after completion of linear growth but extreme motivation strict diet activity schedule should be maintained that may be very difficult so multidisciplinary team pediatrician endocrinologist dietitian psychologist behavioral therapist exercise instructor parents and family all of them consistently should help so primary prevention is always important see now let us see prevent the intrauterine malnutrition exclusive breastfeeding appropriate complementary feeding no forceful overfeeding repeated exposure of healthy food may develop a liking other points already i had discussed this screen time junk food and very important is parental involvement then only we can achieve so what we are going to have give a anticipatory guidance to the adults and there are number of ways to stay healthy so there is a 5210 all of we know about that five or more servings of fruit and vegetable each day two hours of recreational less than two hours screen time one hour or more of moderate to vigorous exercise and zero junk or sweet and carbonated drinks energy drinks so make a habit of front of pack pack labels reading still in, in india front of pack labeling is not happening in some countries like uh, israel brazil they have achieved this reduction of non communicable diseases and obesity by having a proper contents front of pack up pack labels if you see the i, I just saw the oat maggi so there it will be mentioned what is the content the up is a noodle and small quantity is a oat once you start reading you will develop the habit so traffic light diet approach is very important what to eat more what to eat in moderation very important for us to know so ultimately it is a heterogeneous disorder with a multifactorial causes it is a global epidemic lifestyle change is required and decrease your weight and increase your grace it is a urgent action is required for prevention of obesity so this many adults and like it where there is a will there is a way if you show these photos i think they get carried away with the film hero and heroines see this heroine who was obese now she is a beautiful girl so what are our key messages obesity is a chronic disease requires a long term multidisciplinary approach to manage obesity in adults and screening of obesity related comorbidity should be a routine part of every every practice the key to management is not doing unnecessarily investigation but diagnose properly and treat obviously early onset rapid progression delayed development growth puberty abnormal metabolic work these are there for detailed work up and uh, obesity is often multi generational disease so requires a family involvement and they are very much subjected to bullying teasing they they become a comic i think all the serials or movies these obese characters are taken as a comedians so they should be approached with a positive and compassionate manner age and gender based cut off should be used in the growth chart drugs and bariatric surgery is the last resort so i have tried to tell let me thank dr anjana hulse pediatric endocrinologist from bangalore and dr naglata for providing me the naglata chidanand she has provided me some references so oh, thank you very much i overshoot by 5 minutes thank you very much thank you very much dr geeta ji and we have a expert Dr. Sharma, who would put uh, give his comments on this uh, particular lecture, and it was a wonderful lecture, Dr. Geeta. You have covered it so nicely. It's a vast topic, uh, very difficult to cover, but it is most important because not only that it causes a physical problems, but it causes mental and behavioral problems. Dr. Sharma, please. Thank you, thank you very much, sir, and I thanks, Kothwal, sir. डॉक्टर आरजी पाटिल डॉक्टर सचिन डॉक्टर दिनेश डॉक्टर संजय योगेश एंड आवर रेस्पेक्टेड गोदंकर सर एंड सो मेनी आवर रेस्पेक्टेड सीनियर्स एंड आई ए पी एंड ए एच ए सीनियर पर्सन डॉक्टर हरेंद्र सिंह एंड डॉक्टर पाटिल सर एंड आई थैंक्स ए एच ए एंड ए ओ पी नागपुर फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वेबिनार and as you have said sir dr geeta patil is covered 
all the things not left any corner for me to to say something but few points i would sir unmute sir unmute unmute sir sharma sir sorry sorry sir sorry we have double burden thank you sir for reminding me we have double burden of the obesity one end we are going to a pandemic country of obesity and obese and other end we are facing malnutrition and undernutrition so we are double burden uh, uh, we have and our pediatrics incidence is very high as dr geeta told 67 to 8% overall obesity in our country and about 17% <laughs> overweight and about the causes cs nicely told that 95% of the obesity is exogenous so our focus should be on 95% not for the 5% and less than 5% that is endogenous so we should left this portion and refer to the endocrinologist for that and we should concentrate our main on 95% of the, the portion of the obesity and we can improve this by lifestyle modification exercises hello hello lifestyle modifications and regarding the history point of view i would add something we should take detail history of physical exercise and dietary history in the detail and sleep history three history i would like to stress to must be taken in the detail and all about the lifestyle modification eating habits and food habits as told and we should emphasize on 5210 formula to our all uh, parents attending to our clinic which we feel like obese uh, children if if we feel we come across a short and obese uh, adolescent then we must go and think in the terms of endogenous cause and we should uh, investigate for thyroid etc in that less than 5% cases and she has already told the latest happening in the field of obesity need about the needs and all the our efforts to be three points i would like to stress diet already told by dr geeta exercise i modify this time one hour is we can't spr and anyone but 30 minutes to 40 minutes can be spr so we should spr minimum 30 minutes daily and advocate to our daily to the our adolescents and regarding the exercise any exercise is better than no exercise so we must do exercise daily healthy food habits and social stigmata we should not even bully anyone and uh, advocate of, of our adolescents to please don't bully anyone regarding the obesity and like that thank you very much thank you dr geeta for covering all the points and thank you all viewers and listeners for this very good topic and we should spread the knowledge about prevention of this obesity not treatment Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you all. Thank you very much, sir. I would request Dr. Punita Arora to do the uh, further proceedings of and conduct question answer session and vote of thanks also. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir. Good conducting. Uh, uh, wait, Sonia. Sonia. Yes. Uh, our uh, yeah, our president, Dr. Sanjay Pakmode, is there, and I welcome him. And I request to welcome all the audience. Sanjay. Yes. <laughs>
संजय बाकमोडे संजय सर कैन यू हियर मी या या गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर संजय बाकमोडे प्रेसिडेंट एओपी 2023 because of some emergencies i could not join on the at 4 pm sharp i joined very late apology for that <clears throat> it was a really uh, a wonderful presentation by geeta patel madam and i welcome all the guests for the today's uh, this virtual session and dr nishikant kotwal sir rg patel sir and our patron dr uday bodhankar sir <clears throat> and uh, i hand over this mic to the for the proceedings yeah thank you sanjay i also thanks dr nishikant kotwal sir for the valuable time and i call upon dr uh, dr sonia arora for further proceedings dr sonia yes, sir can thank i you, sir. one minute uh, one interrupt i think umesh khurana sir has asked as usual very intelligent question that the bmi is 27 sir khurana sir are you there and uh, uh, i think father also is having 27 what to do that is the role of the family so it is a epigenetics in the family he has asked the question in the chat that is the one which we have to do it the family should be involved individual management doesn't help the time when you observe it if it is a individual thing it is very rare most of the time family management that's the reason bmi is high yeah uh, dr sony yes are sir are there any questions are there any questions in any the questions yes sir it's a nice to see sanjay satna ratna parki sir on his uh, cross trainer are there any questions in the question box sonia mm, um, sir i'll just check sir wait no 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 sir Only everybody question. is saying an excellent presentation as it is thank you ma'am i extend my heartfelt thanks to dr geeta patel madam she is an esteemed faculty for today's event and chairperson elect central ah for enlightening us with their knowledge on an important topic obesity in adolescent i would like to thank our expert faculty central ah secretary dr arin sharma sir who guided us on this topic and helped us develop a better insight i extend my heartfelt thanks to our own Dr. R. G. Patel, sir, Joint Secretary, Central A. H. A. for mentoring us so well today and always. I would like to thank all our advisors, Dr. Nishikant Chowdhury, sir, Dr. Nishikant Kotwal, sir, Professor Dr. M. S. Rawat, sir, Dr. Uday Budhankar, sir, for being with us always as a guiding force. I express a big thanks to Dr. Praveen Dhake, sir, Chairperson A. H. A. Nagpur, Dr. Lene Shivalkar, sir. Chairs in elect A H N Nagpur, all past presidents and all executive members of A H N Nagpur for their valuable presence today. Thanks to all delegates for your patient listening and active participation in today's event. Thank you all. Doctor Arinder Singh sir, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. Arinder Singh sir. Arinder Singh sir. Not heard, sir. If we are not audible, you are not audible, sir. i think uh, dr harin under his leadership they are going to come with the obesity treatment and prevention module for aha and they are under uh, uh, it is under process i think from the north zone this module will be submitted to aha and i in, i take this opportunity to invite everyone for our monthly central aha session on the diap on 20th april last time we had a adolescent immunization viewers viewership was very good this time 20th april we are going to have a pediatric endocrinology how to learn about the growth charts whatever i talk now will be elaborated more and how when we should refer the patient as sharma sir rightly told our 
concentration is a exogenous obesity which is more than 95% but same time we should not miss anything pathological so we have to know basics but we should know when to refer so we welcome everyone sharma sir to everyone for our 20th april session thursday 8:30 to 10:30 night so harinder singh sir you want to comment something sir it is muted or what it is no he is he he is unmute Problems sir you can join the... from the mobile mobile you can join re 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 join sir re join i think dr gurmeet is there any questions gurmeet madam i have one question can yes, i ask sir. yes sir see these days the exogenous obesity is are more common because endogenous obesity is we can hardly do much except for training them to exercise then uh, telling their parents to do it uh, take a, take care because adolescents are always known as rebellion and at that time only they they grow in such a fashion that it is very difficult later on to reduce their weight plus the mental things which are associated with uh, obesity like loss of self esteem then uh, targeting the peers are targeting them for their obesity leads to more and more being eating and obese. so what can we do for it so it is our clinic we have to give anticipatory guidance anticipatory guidance is the solution for that even if they are not obese please tell about that no So and put a chart about that five two one zero. What it is? It uh, when they see first of all adolescents nowadays they are coming for a physical problems also more. So whenever they come, give a anticipatory guidance. No, anticipatory guidance solves our many problems. No, not only here, many other things. No, mental health disorders also it helps. Yeah, we, we, we can guide the patient to some activity Very. combined together. Together they yeah. can join with uh, uh, adolescents. Uh, Geeta Patil, madam. Yes, Actually, sir. there is a some statement like neighborhood uh, vocability index. I think the study is going on in the Bangalore in Karnataka. Uh, can which you index? highlight on it? Which index? Neighborhood vocability index. No, I am not very much sure yeah, about. Yeah. It. I will just find out and let you know. Sure. Yes, Harinder Singh, sir. Yes. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yeah. First of all, thank you, Doctor Geeta, for a very comprehensive uh, uh, taking up of the obesity in adolescent. Uh, and I uh, invite all of you to the Adolescon 2023 at Amritsar on 6th, 7th, and 8th of October. The Holy City of Amritsar is waiting for you. And in that, we have got the workshop on obesity, which will be covering the diagnosis, the investigation, and the treatment part. We have got a one full day workshop on obesity, and it's. Uh, Start. We have lots of people are doing it, and I invite you for all that. And there we will do much more than what you are doing today. The time was very short. It will be out four to five hours workshop will be there, and each point of the obesity will be taken care in that regarding the exogenous and the endogenous, the metabolic and the other causes of obesity, how to diagnose it and how to treat it. These all will be taken. So I request you to kindly join the Adolescon 2023 and also put. Uh, Put your uh, this thing for the workshop on the sixth of uh, October for the obesity workshop. Uh, I, I thank all the uh, organizers of this uh, CME and thank the Agra group and the Doctor Patil, Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Sharma sir, Doctor Geeta Patil, and all Doctor Shikant, Doctor Shant, and all the senior members, Doctor Mesh Kumar, uh, for this uh, wonderful workshop. And I think. Uh, if we go on doing these type of uh, Zoom meetings, and we can cover so many topics. Last uh, time we had adolescent immunization. Now we have got the obesity, and next topic as Dr. Geeta has told be endocrine. So I think by step by step we can cover all the topics and make all uh, people enrich in the adolescent medicine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Geeta. Thank you, Dr. Geeta.
So thanks to everybody. Bodhankar sir. Comments from Dr. Bodhankar. Bodhankar sir, I think has left. Left, okay. Yeah, I, we can have opinion from Asian Patil sir. Sir, uh, you are Asian Patil sir, may I have your opinion? Patil sir. Is no. Is is also on. So, uh, RG sir, please. He is not a president. RG, sir. If there are no questions, then we can do. So, uh, thank you, Gita, madam. Uh, right now, there are no questions from the audience. I once again thank uh, today's speaker, Chairman Elect, uh, Gita Bhatil, madam, uh, Secretary A.H.A. R.M. Sharma, sir, Joint Secretary R.G. Patil, sir, Advisor Central A.H.A. Dr. Nishikan Kotwal, sir, uh, A.H.A. Chairperson from Yatmal Sanjay Ratna Parki, sir, our fellow colleague and AOP President Nagpur, Dr. Sanjay Pakmone, sir, all senior pediatrician, Bodankar sir, Yashan Patil sir, Suresh Nave sir, for joining for today's program. And if there are no questions, uh, I declare this as uh, the meeting is over. Thank you all. Thank you once again. Thank you, Gita Patil, madam. And congratulations, Pravin sir, for successfully holding the meeting. Thank you, Lene, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Sharma, sir. Should we end the meeting now? Or is there something? Yes, sir. Yeah, we are not a end now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining uh, today's meeting. Other question. Particular question. How did you tell me about the time?